How's it going gamers? Chongo here and today I've got a gameplay commentary for you guys. The gameplay is of Assassin's Creed 4 on the PC and today's commentary topic is going to be about Ireland topping the highest pre-orders for the PlayStation 4 and Australia topping the highest pre-orders for the Xbox One. So let's get into it. First off, thanks to Celtic Man on Run for sending me this link. I thought it was very interesting to see that Australia and Ireland were so high up when it comes to pre-orders for these next-gen consoles, which I suppose they're not really next-gen if you're in North America now, but for the most part, most places still don't have the PlayStation 4 besides North America at this point, but the Xbox One launched last Friday, and I thought it was very interesting to see that Australia had the highest per store basis for pre-orders for the Xbox One. So by per store, this doesn't mean that they had the most pre-orders out of all countries, it means per store for the population who have pre-ordered it. So for example, there could be stores that they have thousands of pre-orders for an Xbox One. And Ireland has the highest for the PlayStation 4 per store, so I thought this was very interesting to see that Australia and Ireland were pre-ordering these consoles at such a high rate, considering they're not the first picks for the countries that I would have put up the top for pre-ordering these consoles at like mass amounts. Now I've spent some time going and trying to research why Australia and Ireland would be so high up when it comes to next-gen console pre-orders, but I haven't actually been able to find anything conclusive. There's no article saying, you know, why they believe this is, so it's basically just me stabbing in the dark, and I haven't really got much for Ireland. I tried to find some information as to why that is the case, but I couldn't really find anything. But with Australia, I can basically take a guess, and one of the guesses I can see there's probably a little bit of brand loyalty towards Microsoft and that's why people are trying to buy this Xbox One in Australia which is kind of odd when you think about it because some of the apps and TV things won't really work in Australia just like with the Xbox 360 all the stuff comes out that we can't even use in Australia so I thought it was very interesting to see Australia you know buying a console that some of the aspects of it we can't even use. Also back when the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 launched in Australia the PlayStation 3 had a really high price for retail which I thought was ridiculous I think it was set at about a thousand dollars retail. Now this was way too high for a console. I mean, yes the PlayStation 3, you could argue, had better graphics than the Xbox 360, but a thousand dollars? That's way too much. Even though the Australian minimum wage is a lot higher than some countries, a thousand dollars is still a lot of money to fork out for a console. Especially when you're going to just really be playing games on it. It's not like a computer where you can go and do pretty much anything you want on it. I remember as a kid in high school I really did want to get a PlayStation 3, but I didn't have the money, and obviously at that time I didn't have a job or anything like that, so I couldn't really get a thousand dollars and I wasn't gonna get a thousand dollar Christmas present so in the end I just ended up getting an Xbox 360 because I think that was about five hundred or six hundred dollars in the end back when I bought it in about 2007 I think so it, it was kind of an alright price compared to the PlayStation 3 now I think that's probably the reason that there's so many pre-orders for the Xbox one in Australia this time around mainly because if you've bought an Xbox 360 and you've made all these friends on there and they're all planning to get the Xbox one that's obviously going to be a choice when you go to buy a, a gaming system so I think that's what's happened there's a lot of people in Australia who like the Xbox and I originally did until I moved over to PC and it's just yeah m most people would rather continue along with that trend as opposed to jumping to a different system where they're gonna have very little friends now when the Xbox 360 was launched in Australia in about 2006 it broke the record for the biggest console launch in Australia and I think it sold about 30,000 units in four days or something like that but this record was later broken by the Wii and an article that I've just recently read basically said that the Xbox One has broken that record set by the Wii to the biggest console launch in Australia's history. I also think price this time around may have also influenced people to purchase the Xbox One mainly because the two consoles in Australia have a very close price point. $50 isn't that much when you're going to buy a brand new system, especially when you take into account that the Xbox One does come with Kinect, even though some people don't like it. If you went to buy the PlayStation I, it would cost you an extra $80 to $100, which basically makes up for the $50 $50, the Xbox One is worth more in Australia. So I'm very interested to see that there's two countries that I wouldn't have thought would be too high up on the console pre-orders to ba basically be sitting there. So I thought that was very interesting of an article. I hope you guys enjoyed listening about it. If you did, give it a like, and if you've got any comments about this, put it down below. And if you want to join the Gamerhood, just subscribe. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.